Negative GRV inbound to your station team peers. Brace yourself. TD, is there anything good we can say about the double tap? I'm trying. I'm, I'm really honestly trying. I'll try too. I give every product a fair shake. I do. I entered the testing process as you did too, I know. With no predispositions, no prejudice, and we hope for the best. I, I usually rep the funky, kind of maybe hokey stuff, and I'm usually pretty positive about it. You know, I, I think I gave it a fair shake, and now I'm sitting here pondering the cosmos, trying to come up with one good thing. And I'm just, I'm sending my soul back through time, trying to find the thread along the the build of this thing and from the design and the, the blueprints and at no point did anyone say hey is it, uh, did they say hey is this really a good idea does the market really need this is that what you mean i think a lot of people probably bit their tongues here's the gun times. here's your backing board to declutter the very cool background by the way the bunker we've got some cool guns back there some you've seen maybe some you haven't i don't know if you've seen this one right here Right there, we got the Corvette Grand Sport up there. We got a P61 Black Widow, some shell cases, G17 Predator, lots of cool stuff. There's a double tap, dudes. So this is the gun. Let me give you a different color. Oh, look at that production value, dude. That's awesome. Green screen. I don't, I don't even have to CGI this. That's awesome. Pretend we just green screened it at the beach. Now it's on the moon. Awesome. So here it is. We'll show it to you in close format as we move along here, bunker style. I was debating to do this tabletop, but I want you to see the look of disappointment in our faces. Don't you think? Yeah. I'm not messing around. So what were you saying about philosophy abuse? I do. What, so what do you envision this gun being used for? And this is the first Derringer that I've reviewed. So it, the first big one, we did that little tiny 22 bond arms one not the bond arms is north american north american that was it. yeah the sidewinder that's not a really a derringer that's a yeah. five shot it's this really is a two shot derringer oh. modern rendition bond arms traditional bird's head grip is a competitor to this mm -hmm. oh and by the way they're 500 dollars, and this one isn't cheap uh, i won't say a price but it's uh i don't know it's not inexpensive Philosophy of use, what were you saying? I was about to say, speaking of bond arms, this does kind of fit into this weird, I guess, classification of guns made to a singular vision and a funky style, because bond arms is now making that Boberg XC9, that bullpup funky pistol. Right. But what's the bullpup pistol? And it, it's not yeah, well, I know which one you're talking about. The Roberg, you're saying. Yeah. I don't like got that Got divorced, gun. had to sell off. Got but they're kind of like in that, that same niche. It's this bizarro it. carry pistol okay so first POU what, who would use this gun what would you say I, I've been trying to pretzel my brain to figure out a, a situation where I would have all these different options and choices arrayed and I would say ah the double tap is perfect for this situation and the, I still can't create one but the closest I get is I want to leave a a gun in the house for the babysitter to use what? I want so I want someone to be armed at home but i don't want them to be armed too well in maybe what two rounds you know you can't do too much damage with i'm going to give you uh, a point just for the entertainment value of that philosophy of use um your babysitter with no training firing a you take your pick nine millimeter or 45 acp version of the double tap is probably going to end up in the er with a dislocated wrist jumping ahead to how it shot uh, I'm exaggerating, of course, for effect, but, uh, dude, a lay person shooting this, mm -mm. A, an experience, ah, I'm jumping ahead to how it shot. I can't do that. We got to focus, focus, nothing. Philosophy of use. Babysitter gun says TD. Say in comments if you like that philosophy of use. Mate, but that's, that's Hold on. What babysitter would you trust with any gun? But that's the I thing. lock them all up. I was like, hey, I man, would lock everything up. I would up, trust any babysitter with any gun. Yes, I mean, you can limit the amount of damage that they could do. They're probably not going to hit anything. They're stuck with two rounds. Yeah, but they can't figure they out could how hurt to reload themselves it. unless they have awesome training. But Forget that's the thing. It. That says so much about it that that's the most useful situation I can conjure. All right, let me anchor it with this. 
we're talking philosophy of use, double tap Derringer, modern build. It came out in SHOT Show 2012, and I think it was available in the market in 2013. I avoided it because it is so darn ridiculous, to put it mildly. And uh, finally, I was walking through Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store. Thank you, Gunny's, for the loaner. I appreciate you, seriously. And he said, hey, this would be fun to review, wouldn't it? And I was like, um, oh. he's like, try it. And it kind of turned out how I thought it would, but it's still going to be a fun review. This will be high entertainment value for sure. <laughs> but I think grounding it with philosophy of use, it's for guys who love 45 ACP. There's a love out there for 45 ACP. Maybe a guy has a 1911. He goes, I don't want to care. We do you have one here. We don't. Uh, uh, he goes, I don't want to carry my 1911. It's too big. It's 41 ounces. But I love the 45 ACP, and there's some old timers out there who think it's the only fight stopper cartridge out there, going back to World War II, I guess. And I don't think that's true at all with the modern loads. We've talked about that a lot in tabletop. But maybe he does, and he goes, hey, I'd rather have two fight stopping rounds of 45 ACP. That's really who, what this is for. And then it's a modern, supposedly a modern rendition of a traditional Derringer, which maybe attracts people. A coat pistol is kind of what they like to mention. That's another POU is that they can, it can fire with inside a pocket. So this mythical pervert that loves 230 grain 45, he puts on his mustache wax, cracks I, open the I phone book. I wouldn't call book, him a pervert. Looks, <laughs> I just like he's not a pervert. He's just let's kidding see, around. This is see, TD. Let's see barbecue restaurants, rolls. huh? Let, this one looks good. <laughs> now let me get my 45. Oh, I'll take the Derringer two well, rounds. Well, I will say the funny part is uh, I, and I've heard this through the years, through the decades, like, hey, man, it's really important to shoot through a coat pocket. Where's that J-frame? Competitive option. So this is an exposed hammer, Model 36 J-frame. It's fantastic. It's an older Smith. And guys in, the, in like the 80s would say, oh, that's a great gun, but dude, it doesn't have a shrouded hammer. You can't shoot it through a coat pocket. I'm like, are you an undercover DEA agent that you actually have to shoot through a coat pocket that often? I think it's really a ridiculous consideration. I'm sorry, it's ridiculous that you would buy a gun on the outside chance that you'd have to fire it through a coat pocket. It's just so damn ridiculous. I, I don't even, I can't wrap my head around it. I'm not a historian, but I do have to wonder if our <clears> attitudes <throat> towards those have changed now that CCW is a lot more common. Prevalent. And expected, yeah. Because everyone has holster systems and sure. stuff. Maybe back in the day when your holster option was like a wallet with a hole cut out in it. Also, the understanding and awareness of the concealed carry community as a whole due to channels like mine, other channels, giving uh, seriousness to the option of carrying, the legal ramifications. You, don't, you just don't cap somebody from inside the pocket. <laughs> You're not going to go, hey, man, get up to it. Next thing you know, two rounds come out of your, your London fog raincoat. Does anyone wear those anymore, London fog? Yeah. <laughs> And then the guy's got two rounds of 45 ACP. That's assuming you can hit with this thing. Huh, it's almost like you were just describing Big assumption. A, a pervert in a London fog jacket. <laughs> huh, maybe a profile is starting to come together. Full circle, full circle. So the legal awareness is higher. So the chances of you shooting from in, inside a pocket is so damn ridiculous. You'd want to, if you have to get to that lethal force confrontation, you better present your gun, issue a loud, clear warning if you have time, I'm saying if you have time, if you can extract yourself from the situation, and then maybe, maybe shoot. So anyways, enough of that. Uh, yeah. And they're also saying, philosophy of you said, it's oh, so simple. There's so few parts to break. It's snag free. It's rounded corners. I'll give you the fact it is narrow and it is snag free. It is. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the fact that it's simple, but, but wait, when we get to the point uh, of when we talk about how it's shot. You would think simplicity would equal reliability and excellence. <gasps> Jumping ahead. Jump. Nothing fancy. We love your rant. Roger that. This whole GRV is going to be a rant by TD and myself. Okay, philosophy of use. Obviously, concealed carry, maybe special purpose concealed carry, where you think you need a gun of this format. And this is a big kicker. You think that with all the other options out there, with all the different calibers, many of which we're gonna mention in this probably feature length video because there's some interesting and funny stuff to talk about, but with all the ca calibers and different formats, guns out there that you think two rounds is good enough and that you think that you're gonna be able to reload 
from the compartment and the speed loaders in the bottom of your uh, double tap. So here's your compartment right here. You can see it's really easy to open too. Oh, there it goes. There you go. So maybe maybe four total, and you're going to be able to reload that. Two rounds is enough. Uh, that's an interesting philosophy of use. I would say uh, maybe, 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 big maybe as a backup pistol to something else I have. I wouldn't count on it. It doesn't even like eject them. Maybe you could right. maybe make a case and go, yeah, you, but you could right. reload it. That's like what I'm saying. And you pop it. And There's it no auto out. eject feature, which would be very cool. And this thing is not ultimately lightweight for just two rounds. You're looking at five eighths inch wide, five and a half inches in length, 3.9 inches in height. Sorry, I'm not doing a good job centering it. And it's 13 and a half ounces unloaded. That's not exactly light. We're going to show you some much lighter competitive options that I... NTD would choose. Philosophy of use, uh, carry gun, vehicle gun. Dude, I'd rather have a Taurus judge in this thing. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> or the public defender, the lighter one, the poly public defender. I did an update video on that. Oh my gosh, contain nothing, contain. Philosophy of use, uh, how about recreational shooting? It's almost like my profile's coming up again. How else would you describe someone that likes pain? <laughs> His profile huh. is... Would you say pervert? You said I'm not allowed to call people perverts. No, I, I said, no, no, no. I said you can't just say a guy because he likes 45 ACP is a perv. That's not fair. But you got to understand TD's sense of humor. He goes everywhere. So that's what you dial in for and that's what you're going to get. Philosophy of use. Uh, I'm done. There's, there's more stuff. Oh, let me say this. Guys who just like a Derringer. They just like it. They like the Old West thing. Uh -huh. And you would think they would go with a Bond Arms or maybe another competitive off offering like that. Go on the used market, get one of those older two-shot Derringers. So there's some guys like that. They like the Derringer, TD. And all 12 will make this a rousing sale success. <laughs> 12. Okay, moving on. Features of the Double Tap, and we chose one in 45 ACP because we wanted to experience the effervescence of a full-powered, full-powered, rimless cartridge in this 13 and a half ounce thin format. That's what we want to do. So we chose that. Uh, features. I talked about the dimensions already. Okay. Uh, it is milled out of a block of 7075 aluminum, this portion right here. And then this portion, of course, is steel, 17-4 stainless steel, nitrided. And uh, there you go. The grips uh, have an attempt at checkering. What do you think about that, TD? Is it, it is good? horrible. It is horrible horrible it does nothing whatsoever and we're going to get into the ergonomics right here overall um how do i put this delicately they are baffling no me. i have a better way it, uh the ergonomics overall are total shit. there you go that i'm just going to put it is that delicate enough see this is in my spiritual journey through the cosmos <laughs> i saw a drawing room and there's this guy and he's looking over the drawing and he's like, huh, the shape. And he's like, it's good, right? It's an awesome shape. Look at how ergonomic it is. And he's like, yeah, it's, uh, uh I, I, well, might, I think it's That's perfect. a really good point. It reminds me of a gun that was drawn on a CNC uh, or a CAD CAM program. Yeah. With no consideration or no testing to the human hand. Yep. Said on paper, it looks awesome. Yeah. That's your point right there. That's what you're it's, saying. Look, it's wide. Dude, it's so cool. It's easy it's to hang on to. It's only five eighths inch wide. Look, and then we have like all this space for rounds in the butt. It's okay. perfect. Ergonomically, here's one of the many things that's wrong with it. I don't mind a short grip. There's plenty of guns that I shoot that he shoots. We've shot in, in TMP that have short grips. They're okay. What I don't like about this, number one, is that it's hard and it has very sharp corners and transitions. So when you're getting that full power 45 ACP, 230 grain bullet recoil, forget the porting, because it didn't do much. If you're wondering, hey, that's ported, it should be soft shooting. No, it didn't do crap that I noticed. More blast. Yeah, I didn't shoot the unported version. I'm sure there'd be some difference, but you know, whatever, 10% better, loss of velocity. The grip is horrible. It's just really uncomfortable. It's way sharp. There's no uh, attempt whatsoever to give you any palm swells. Heck, even North American Arms does that on, on their mini 22 pistols. You know? Uh, and how about controllability when you're firing it? 
That it just see that's it's Do you feel like you're in control with ergonomically with a grip in this gun? It's like holding on to a bar of dry soap. <laughs> I feel like it's holding on to an ingot of steel that's slippery. And then, so the grip is a total fail. Not only is it super sharp, there's no real traction on it on the side, on the back. There's a lanyard attachment right here if you care. Like you're gonna dangle this gun from your neck or wherever at 14 ounces pretty much. And then we get to the trigger. So consider we don't have grip, it's narrow, it's difficult to control, it's uncomfortable. You're gonna have a lot of recoil. And then we gotta come to this freaking trigger, which is double action only, right? Double action only, awesome, man, it's a cool trigger, right? The take up is tremendously long and trying to find out when it's gonna break is an impossibility. It's gonna break here, it's gonna break here, it's gonna break here. And what you may see when I'm shooting it is I had to like stage the first pad of my index finger up here so I would have some indication when it's gonna break. But now my grip is not ideal because now I have a void of air right here and I'd really like to be really choked up on it hard you know, it in there like that, but I found by pulling it, I had to, I didn't really know when it's gonna break. Look how deep I'm coming back right here. Still hasn't broke. Pull, 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 still hasn't broke. Pull, 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 no, 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 there it is. That trigger is really rough. It has a long, long take up and it breaks so hard that my trigger uh, scale cannot even measure it. I remember when it's, we- I don't know. 15 pounds, I'm guessing, I don't know. When we got it, I pulled the trigger dry fire and it going, huh, this is an interesting thing. And it didn't register as a trigger in my brain software. It felt more like a, maybe a, like a button or a detonator or something. It's, mm -hmm. this, it, it's not. It's a straight pull trigger. So it comes back, it does not pivot. It's made of aluminum, I believe. It's just this giant Milled brick aluminum. that you're moving like an inch and a half, it feels like. And then right at here, some dude. point it just decides to break. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, and you know, a selling point on their website is, hey, it's a double action trigger. You have second strike capabilities. Well, guess what? It doesn't quite work that way. It comes at a cost. You're going to have an alternating strikes on the top and lower barrel through a certain mechanism. So if you have a light primer strike and jumping ahead, we have several light primer strikes. It's not just a simple affair of pulling the trigger and firing that round off. Now you've got to play the guessing game. And the guessing game is, as you go through the grip problem, as you go through pulling it with your pads, like, uh, is it gonna cook off? No, it didn't. Uh, it's like Russian roulette. Yeah. You're really playing Russian roulette. Uh, is it gonna cook off here? Uh, boom, there it is. Uh, boom, well now what, am I on top, bottom? I just don't know, it's really confusing. Both Take chambers a breath, loaded man. Russian roulette gun. Breathe, oxygen. Although, Do you have any oxygen nearby? Seriously, I need to breathe. I did just realize what this thing is meant for in the POU. And I, it's dawned on me and all is well with the universe now. Thrown so. into a lake. Ask me later, no. And someone finds it 100 years from the future and they wonder what the hell they were thinking when they put this together. We're thinking That's that, a great POU, I like that one. We're thinking the wrong way. This shouldn't be a production pistol. You ready? What? This is a 3D printed pistol. Oh. that has been made oh. by a mass producing manufacturer oh, that's who's built them. This is perfect to slap together in your basement out of a bunch of materials. Cause then, yeah, and it's even based on the Liberator, the FP45 from World War II. <laughs> they said that was the inspiration for it. So oh, it that's a good circle. reference point, dude. That was the clandestine drop behind yeah. enemy lines. It was a single shot though, wasn't it? Yeah, single shot, yeah. rotating breech. Stamped metal really cheap and they gave it to the resistance fighters. Yeah, it costs like 50 bucks a beast to make and then they threw them all in the ocean. I bet you that Liberator pistol, I hope that's the name of it, has a better trigger pull than this one does. Probably. I'm just guessing. What but see, doesn't that make sense? Because if you were to make this, then you'd be like, yeah, it's not Gosh. a semi-auto, it's not a revolver. Those are too complex for me to put together in my garage. They're too complex. But this, I mean, if you look at the schematic, it's got a couple springs in there, but it's pretty doable. I, mm. I think it's a wonderful 3D printed, like, you know, homebrew pistol. Okay, uh, back to features. We've got some serrations here. This is your, I guess, your release button right here. And TD has a couple things to say about this release button, go. It keeps falling out. Demo it. Dude, it's not, and I don't think it's It rotates, I've, been, I've seen it rotate. Well, and it's I, not good. I think it's just press fit. By the way, the watch for the review is a Torgoin T34 with a nut and fancy hands modification. Eats your heart out with a distressed black leather strap. I'm wearing this sleeve not to be cool or to hide my tattoos. 
of which I have many. See? I'm kidding, I don't. Uh, but uh, I have some tendon stuff going on, so I compression. Oh yeah, check that out, look at that. See, it's just <laughs> pressed on, there's no, like, there's nothing. For a 45 ACP handgun that recoils a lot. But that, see, it, just like the grip, it's almost like they're surprised that it, it had so much recoil. Let me be devil's advocate there, but nothing fancy, that's really easy to put back on and put some, you know, blue Loctite on. TD, take it away. This in, Get it ready for a TD rant. when I hear this, because people go, you want this? It's not a big deal. It's just a couple loose screws. Dude. Get it right from the factory is what he's saying. Get it right from the, buy some damn Loctite. And actually we shot a lot of guns, to, not a lot, uh, we shot four and pretty much every gun had issues. It happens so often, 1911. Oh, why are the grip panels loose? And it's always, oh, it's fine, just tighten them up. I'm like, I know, it's not tough to tighten them up, but when you pay like a $1,000 for a But Loctite is so expensive, they can't afford it. I'm, yeah. That's the, sarcasm, The dudes the from Remington are like, dude, it's like four bucks a tube, it's are you crazy? It's four bucks, are you crazy? You can't slather that on everything. Yeah, we're not made of money over it's here. It's not barbecue sauce. <laughs> There's your porting. Uh, okay, we kind of made fun of it. Uh, d is it important it's ported? Well, here's a dealio. You're firing from little tiny barrels. You need all the velocity you can get, and you have to balance that with controllability. But porting is going to create a big, big muzzle flash at night. It's going to kill your night vision, perhaps. Uh, whatever. What does it's, it matter? And, and You're shooting it from inside your pocket. <laughs> Roger that. You're shooting it from inside your running jersey. And then it catches the polyester on fire. <laughs> Um, uh, porting, whatever. I'm neither here nor there. It's going to kill velocity. And we're going to get to some pretty interesting comparisons and they'll just be ballpark, but we're going to really kind of ground the idea behind this pistol in reality. Uh, kind of a straight trigger guard. That's cool. I didn't put my finger up here because it's too close to barrel that I recollect. I don't think I shot it that way. I just shoot what feels natural. And then, uh, the one positive thing, sarcasm alert that tactical doodle really loved are the sights. TD another baffling feature because I'm pretty sure you can't use them as sights. What do you, go ahead, keep talking. It's it's kind of hard to describe, but the channel doesn't really line up with the front sight. It's so an angled channel that is deep and then angles and tapers off to nothing. Can you show them down the rail and I'm gonna attempt to. Best production values right here, ladies and gentlemen. The result is if you look down the channel, you cannot see the front blade, <laughs> which is very diminutive. It's tiny. So it's really strange. You would think they'd cut the channel all the way through. To allow you to see the front sight and, and have your sights level. <laughs> some, some sort of arrangement or do a, a raised area right here with a standard, yeah. you know, U-notch. That would have been great, but they wanted it to be snack free. I get it. Uh, the sights were horrific. It's just, I've never seen a sight picture where it's like flat in the rear and then you want the front sticking up just a little bit. Sticking up just a little bit. Uh, another thing I hate about the release button is you pull it towards yourself. It seems like it'd be more intuitive to push it, right? Nope. You got to pull it and then it pops. Uh, we understand that making it a self-ejecting Derringer would add more complexity, more cost, more weight. We get that. But we're just saying in an ideal world, it'd be really cool is if you had two shots and you pop it, jink. Yeah. Uh, you could do it. Be yeah. smart. Re-engineer it. Just like POF is re-engineering the AR-10. They keep coming out with generation after generation because they're not following anybody else. They're going, we got a problem with this weapon system. How do we improve it? We need some creative thinking. Make a self-ejecting Derringer. Make one in black powder that you can have preloaded moon clip cartridges. Ooh. And it's not FFL required now. Sick. So you can mail order that thing. Yeah. Sick. Now you can mail talking. order from Gunny's, the great American gun store. I'll have him carry it. So anyways, it, it pivots and uh, whatever. I, th I thought it rotates more. I was thinking of the jet fire that we shot alongside of it. Uh, so pl plucking the, the casings out were, was problematic. It didn't come readily. You would think they just shake right out. Not really. Better in the 9mm version? I don't know. But it was annoying, don't you think? Yeah. It was annoying. It, it, like, I'm thinking a reload in this thing under stress in combat. Forget it. Much like the original Forget Liberator, it. you'll be dead before you can reload. <laughs> it is radius and chamfered on the muzzle here. You can see it. Dope. I think the quality as they did it is high. Yeah. I mean, I'm not looking at the workmanship on this pistol and saying, oh, this is crap. It's not. Yeah. They put it together well, and maybe that accounts for some of the exorbitant 
cost, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, trigger, grip, sights, SAWC. We've covered everything. How did it shoot? Where's the megaphone? I need this. Let me think. Let me think. How did it shoot? How did it shoot? It was painful. Totally painful. And keep in mind, by the way, you're looking at the shooter in the Nut Fancy Project that did not mind shooting the scandium framed Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum Model 329. There was only one shooter that was not scared of that gun that manned up and shot it over and over again, and it was me. I'm not bragging, I'm setting the stage for this double tap. Okay, so now the 329 has some issues. Did you ever shoot yeah, that gun? Stout. I don't think so. Pretty, yeah, you wouldn't it like it. Gone it, it, I... it, it. It's a lot. And like Jardine got a bloody knuckle out of it. Uh, Steve the tmp -er came out, he shot it, he got bloodied on it. Weird. It didn't happen to me, a lot of it's to grip. But as we talked about with the double tap, there's really no way to, that I found in our short shooting session to mitigate the ergonomic problems. I changed my grip, I tried it, no matter what, and dealing with that super stiff trigger, dude, it was pain. Can I tell him how many times you shot it? I shot it once. Once! You know what he said after he shot it once? Tell him. What? What did you say to me? I said no, I'm not doing it. He said, done. I'm done. I'm done, you can finish shooting. One done. shot. Done, touching it. On the upside or downside, depending on your perspective, it is very uncomfortable to shoot the double tap. And I don't think it would be any better in nine millimeter. It's like taking a bite of a crap sandwich though. I hated the first bite and I'm not gonna be in pain for another week and a half going, man, I'm sure I gave it a fair shake. We're that to was... the point in TMP, we just, we're not gonna sacrifice our bodies anymore. If there's some well, long-term I... health effect we're gonna get from testing this stuff, forget it. Well, I still, I'm surprised cause it, I still have- Show them in the camera, dude. I, you can still see the bone callus. We've shot some other stuff before where it comes away and I'm like, huh, I wonder. Did you get your mommy to kiss it for you? Yeah, like I got like a little brittle old man hand now. So guess who had to do all the shooting on this thing? I did. Guess who hated it? Me. Guess who would never do it again? Me. This thing is so unpleasant to shoot. I didn't even finish a full box. So we don't have a target per se to show you. I have that Jetfire one. We are going for accuracy. You can see in the inset video, we're gonna show you. And the accuracy was not great. It was basically at five yards shooting um, a pie plate and a half. But you gotta keep in mind, you know what's coming. After you fired it one time, you know what's coming. Now you're like, oh my gosh, it's recoil shot. And if you think otherwise, please come out and shoot this gun. Actually, I'm not coming with you. You can shoot it and just post your own video. It is painful to shoot. And so it's gonna be very hard to practice with. Here's my prediction. Can I use the microphone for this? Hmm. Nobody's gonna practice with it. You buy this gun, it's gonna be put away. And then if and when you think it's your go-to concealed carry pistol, the day when you really need it, you're probably not gonna hit crap with it because you're not practiced, because it was too painful to practice, says me. Awful, long take-up trigger with an unpredictable uh, break on it. It was so bad, horrible sights, bad grip, uncomfortable to shoot, painful to shoot. Oh, but wait, there's more many, many, well, within a box, light primer strikes, right? Yeah, and... Click, click, bang. Click, 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 bang, okay. Six poles, two fires. So getting back to that point that people were saying, well, it's simple, it's snag free, you can shoot it in your pocket. It doesn't have a bunch of parts to go wrong on you like those other guns. Wasn't reliable with those. All Wasn't those, reliable. All the parts in here, it's just a puzzle box in here. Stuff, it's always springs flying out. Combat proven Glock 43. Gears shooting out the back. It's just a mess. So it was all of that. Let's go on to some competitive options. So let's consider this. We're gonna be super generous with the double tap in velocity and foot pounds of energy. You have two, we'll say 230 grain rounds. We're gonna pretend that even though it's ported, you're gonna get, and these are ballpark fig figures, 650 feet per second out of those two rounds, times two uh, equals 215 foot-pounds of energy, more or less, 430 foot-pounds. That's generous, by the way. That reminds me about the ammo, too. If you go to the website for the manufacturer looking it up, what greets you? Not an advertisement for the pistol, not any, it's a giant 
worded letter saying, hey, you have to use just normal plain Jane ammo. No plus P, no low recoil, nothing special, That's... nothing fancy. And it even has some pretty common nothing brands fancy. in there that it says you're not supposed to, like stuff you look at, I think like Hydroshock and stuff. Let me ask you this there, Kimasabi. Is that the first thing you would want your customers to see? No. Because what you're saying to the world is that there's been some issues with this gun and it's so important that we've got to get the word out. This is the first thing you see. I'm sorry, that's horrible. Well, in So are guys shooting plus P and blowing the guns up? I don't know, shoot standard pressure. They're very clear about it, but that's the first thing that greets you But you know tap. you're gonna have this little fire breathing cannon that has high recoil. And if a guy's going, well, <sighs> two rounds of 45 will get the job done. I would expect him to go two rounds of 45 plus P will definitely get the job done. I would figure they'd be more inclined to use the the hottest, spiciest right, ammo right. they could possibly get. But let me interject and here. They may do that, but they haven't tested the plus P. Now it's contrary to manufacturers' yeah. re recommendations, so don't do it. But if the guy miraculously shoots plus P out of here and it doesn't blow up, he will never do it again. Says nothing fancy. Yeah. He'll go. Oh my gosh! I have to wrap my wrist. I probably have to go to the ER at this time. I'm exaggerating. Lucky slightly. for him, his wrist is already wrapped because it's stuck on his jacket pocket and now it's on fire because of the porting and it's polyester. Lined. Well, you called him a pervert earlier. It's probably already wrapped from overuse on the oh. keyboard. Yeah, he probably nice has like a wrap on his right arm. Right, from all so the, he's got some the issues there. So Carpal tunnel, have, now he's yeah. running plus P, dude. Tendinitis, so he probably has yeah. like some spandex on there all the time. Yeah. To catch a predator? We're just goofing around. Dude, no, it, uh, no, dude's not going to practice with it. So remember the weight, 13 and a half ounces, five eighths inch thickness. That's good. One of the few good things I can say about Which the gun. They really, that's, they mentioned that a lot. They're like, it's the thinnest. It's only five eighths gotcha. of an inch. And apart gotcha. from like hiding it in my ass right. crack, I can't imagine it makes that <laughs> and much And by the way, his ass crack is big enough to hide. A double tap. It is Just, six as eighths father, of an inch. I will tell you that it is. No, it's more like <laughs> seven eighths of an inch in width. Okay, but consider 13 and a half inches. We're going to say generously 430 foot pounds. Show them the jet fire. So the jet fire is a 25 ACP pistol. I have advocated this little gun forever because it is totally awesome. 25 ACP. It's nine ounces. It's nine rounds as fast as you can pull the trigger. It's much smaller than this. I know we're talking 25 ACP versus 45 ACP. But remember the chances of you hitting something with this, they're not impossible. You can, close distance, you can, but it's gonna be difficult. This is a lot more controllable for female shooters, small statured shooters. For me, a 25 ACP, you can do it. And here's the numbers on it. And they're not great, I'm not saying they are. So it's nine rounds, so eight plus one, 66 foot pounds, more or less. About a 45 grain jacket and hollow point, 600 foot pounds for one magazine, plus one in the tip up barrel for a, a Breda 950 jet fire. Okay, so that's interesting, right? Because that is more foot pounds of energy, assuming you shoot all nine rounds, than this. And guess what? You can hit it and that thing is amazingly reliable. As long as you keep it lubed. Mm -hmm. We had a remembrance of that today. Once you lube it up, it's awesome. The jet fire is amazing and it's tiny. I would carry this gun over this gun all the, all the day long. Now remember the philosophy of use is this is supposedly super slim, super concealable. That's why we're throwing in a jet fire because that's where we're at. So we're gonna go in a lot of different places. So not 600 to whatever, four, what did I say? 430 foot pounds, 450, yeah, 430 foot pounds. How about the Ruger LCP2, TD? Even better even better. So now we have the modern loadings of a 380 ACP. This is a Ruger LCP2. Fantastic in that sage green. It is so beautiful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And here's the basic number subject to change. About a thousand feet per second, probably less. I'm probably being generous with that one too. We're shooting a 90 grain jacketed hollow point with this load. I'll probably roll in some footage too. And we've got eight rounds at 200 foot pounds per round, 90 grain jacket of hollow point. By the way, that's a Buffalo round. Yeah. So those are kind of hot. Those are hot. That's where the thousand, it's a spicy meatball. That's where, where's the Swedish chef, by the way? I can bring him back. Yeah, bring him back. I'll be around, I'll call him. So when I say the foot pounds, have the, have the Swedish chef roll in with his opinion. How many foot pounds? <laughs>
You want the spicy buffalo? <laughs> 1,600 foot-pounds, chef. 1,600 foot-pounds? 1,600 foot-pounds for this little tiny gun. So that's eight rounds of an LCP-2. Okay, let's move on. The Glock 43. Glock Tried and true, my carry pistol pretty much every day. Not always, but generally. The This is a gray uh, Glock 43. So we're going to use 124 grain, non-plus P load. There's eight rounds, they're 1050 feet per second, more or less. And it's 124 grain, standard pressure, 300 foot pounds times eight equals 2,400 foot pounds for a Glock 43. And if you decide to go plus P, which you can with a Glock 43, thank you very little, you'll have 2,880. Did I read that right? 2,880 foot pounds in one magazine. And you can connect with your freaking Glock 43. Women can't connect with it. Your babysitter can't connect with it. Well, I still wouldn't trust her with any gun. None. Um, small stature shooters can connect. It's really not going to be a problem. It's soft shooting. It's goblins, easy to hit with. Dwarves. Dwarves, goblins, hobbits, trolls who live under bridges and on YouTube can connect with orkins. the Glock. Orkins can with Glock 43. Twin Tower people can. The G43 is phenomenal. It's go to war proven. And uh, unlike the double tap, it's 100%. And if you put in like a P365 SIG, the numbers will go even more astronomical for foot pounds because it holds more rounds. Okay, go ahead. Asterisk, this, you're going to have a tough time reselling it when you find out you regret your purchase decision. I'm sorry, double tap. Um, this is a non recommend. You probably figured that out, and the sales are going to tank even more perhaps after this video. And I honestly don't know what the internet's saying about this gun, and I don't care. Yeah. This gun is crap. Maybe the trench coat it wearers get together and talk about how much they love Derringers. So the dude's walking long. You can tell he's got no clothes. He's got his London Fog long rain slicker on. He's like, hey, you want to see something? Like, no, 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 no. I don't want to see it. No, 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 no. You got to see it. Like, for he real. flashes and he's got like a double tap. Yeah. Like duct taped a la Die Hard style to his chest. And he goes, I got a double tap. And the dude says, uh, whatever. I'm out of here. <laughs> no, I wouldn't buy it. Would you, TD? No. Especially for the price. Even if it was 200 bucks, I, I would know. I would literally run away from this gun. So thanks to Gunny. Thanks for the loaner. I really appreciate it. The only other way I could have done it is by going out and buying it and then basically thrown in an ocean as a historical yeah. artifact to be recovered 300 years from now. And someone pulls it out and goes, what the hell? If what were they thinking this... when they put this thing together? And if they shot it 300 years from now, let's say miraculously it's preserved and wasn't corroded, they'd go... When their wrist snaps off because their bone density is going to be less than ours because they don't work. It's kind of like Wally. Yeah. And then they their wrist snaps off. They go, oh my gosh, who put this piece of crap together? Maybe they're watching. Oh, by the way, guns will be banned by then. A couple thousand years from now, and this is one of the few existing blueprints because it's so simple <laughs> and it has so few parts. Oh, and they arm the, their arm. They arm their army with it. Yeah, just like Warhammer. This... <laughs> Humanity forgot how to make they any forgot. other weapons. They the got only back. the only gun they find is a double tap. Yeah, and guess it's what? A... It's going to be the. The selected the, the United Earth standard Federation issue of handgun <laughs> uses this as their sidearm of choice. Idiocracy. Oh, the future Idiocracy. is bleak. In the, the in the grim darkness grim. of the 41st millennium, there's only the double tap. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, uh, we gotta wrap it up. How many minutes have we been babbling? A lot, and it's been a total rush. Bummer summer. Way dude. fun, way fun. So steer clear of the double tap. And if you have one and you love it, go ahead and comment. Say, hey, man, you're wrong. I would love to know how much you shoot it, though. And I would love to know how accurate you are with it. And I would love to know how you classify the recoil. It's not just, um, uh, how we, shall we say, stiff. It's painful. And I've shot a lot of guns since the 1980s. So that's coming from thousands upon thousands of rounds, all types of formats. I'm not the expert, but I've shot a lot of guns. No way. I will never shoot this gun again. Signing off from the bunker. Tactical doodle. Nothing fancy. Thanks for joining and staying in TMP Patreon. The only reason we keep posting videos. TD. TD, ladies and gentlemen. Sweet the chef. Okay, I'm not...